Good night, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We are almost ending this course. Uh, after this night, we are going to have just one more session and it is the end. The time flies and now we are in the last, almost the last uh, session of this course. And it is amazing because it's a month of uh, classes that we are ending tomorrow. And you have another course, I guess. So it's very, very good to end this one. We are going to uh, wait for the others. And uh, then we are going to start with this session because we are going to end the part of the conditional sentence. And then we are going to talk about another thing, another topic. And we are going to end the course tomorrow with another topic. So we are going to begin with this one because um, times it is not really long when we are in this kind of things. So we are going to begin with this one and we are going to make a review of the topic that we were developing the last week. So we were talking about the um, conditional sentences. So we have in the first part, we were saying that we uh, have just three, three type of sentence using the conditional. But at the end, we were saying that we have four types. We have the zero conditional, we have the uh, type one, two, and three. But we are going to develop the last three parts that we were um, learning in the last week. So we are going to see the zero conditional, then we are going to make the review of the other ones. Okay, something to remember. We have something to remember. In this kind of sentences, we have uh, two parts. It's a compound of two parts. We have the if clause and the main clause. That is something that we were learning the last week. So this uh, kind of sentences have um, has two parts, the if clause and the main clause. And uh, this kind of sentence can begin with the if clause or with the main clause. But the difference is that if the if clause is at the beginning of the sentence, we have to write a comma to separate the sentences. That's something that we were learning in the last week. So we have here the uh, four type of conditional sentences and we have the number one, that is the zero conditional. And we were uh, seeing that this is the uh, structure that we are going to use to create sentences with this conditional. And we see in the table that we have the if clause, it's in present simple. That is the structure or that is the tense that we are going to use, the present simple. And for the main clause, also we are going to use the present simple. In this, a sentence and this kind of sentence, we are going to use in the two parts of the sentence, the present simple. So, and the thing with this um, uh, kind of sentence is that we are going to use the zero conditional to express things that always happen in the way that the if clause express. For example, general truth or natural law. So in this case, we are going to talk about something that is true, 
something that has maybe a evidence that it's going to happen. So if the if clause has that sentence or that action that is going to happen, the main clause is going to have that action that is happening. And we have the examples. Uh, if you hit water, it boils. That is something that we already know. Then we have that we can use words when and words if. We can use both of them to create this kind of sentence. So in this case, we can use it. Um, the first conditional, we have another one that is the second one. That is the first conditional or the type one that we have that the if clause, it's a in present simple, but the main clause, it's in future. We are going to use will to create this main clause or this main part of the sentence. Also, we can use the imperative and modal verbs. And we have the example, if we finish early, we will go to the cinema. That is the first example. Now we are going to continue from this point to uh, the second conditional and the third conditional that are the um, other two parts that we were not uh, studying in the last um, session because we are going to expand the information that we have about the type two and the type three of this conditional. So it says, in these sentences, we use present simple for the if clause and the future simple for the main clause. And it says, we have another example. If he comes, if he comes, I will go. If he comes, I will go. In this sentence, we are saying that uh, si él viene, yo iré. In that case, is we are waiting for someone. And if that person comes, I will go to another place. So in that case, if he comes, I will go in the future, in some um, time in the future. Then we have the other one. If we hurry, if we hurry, it says we won't be late. In this case, we're going to use the negative one. It won't be late. In this case, it is not positive. It is in a negative connotation of the sentence. If we hurry, we won't be late. Si nos um, damos prisa, no llegaremos tarde. That is the a negative connotation of the sentence. So we have these examples. It says also that in the main clause, we can use the imperative form or the modal verb. And in this case, we can use may, can, must, have to, and the other modal verbs, followed by the infinitive form of the verb in um, the place of the future simple. So we are going to, to see some examples with the imperative and the modal verb. So it says, We have the example. If you are hungry, if you are hungry, make a sandwich. If you are hungry, make a sandwich. Si tienes hambre, haz un bocadillo. In this case, we are using the imperative for the main clause. 
We have the if clause and we have the main clause. If you are hungry, make a sandwich. Then we have with the model verb, the other example, if you, if you don't feel well, yeah, you must see a doctor. You must see a doctor. If you don't feel well, you must see a doctor. Si no te sientes bien, debes ver a un doctor. In the if clause, we also can use present continuous in uh, replacing the present simple. So we can, um, maybe we can say like this, but we can play with the structures or the tenses. So in this case, we can change the present simple in the if clause. So we have the example. If they are, okay. Um, if they're coming, if they are coming for lunch, we will have to buy some more food. If they are coming, in this case, we are not using the simple present. In this case, we are using the present continuous because we are using the verbs with ing. So it says, if they are coming for lunch, we will have to buy some more food. Si ellos vienen o si vienen a comer, tendremos que eh, comprar más comida. So, in that case, we are replacing the tense, the simple present tense, for the uh, present continuous. It's also in present, but in this case, we are using the verb with ing. Then, with, uh, in the first conditional, we can use unless, uh, that in Spanish, it means a menos que, replacing if plus the negative sentence, unless never uh, can follow by a, a negative form. So it says, Okay, in the first conditional, we can use this word, uh, the word unless, replacing if, or in the place of if.
So we can use, we have here the example. Unless you hurry up, we will be late. Or in uh, the other example we have, if you don't hurry up, we will be late. So in this case, it is not just we can use the word if that is something uh, really, um, that is a rule that we can follow by the um, like very strict rule. In this case, we can use the word unless to create this kind of sentence as we are saying that we can change, that we can change even the uh, the tense of the if clause. So we can uh, play with that, um, with this kind of sentence. There are um, so many things that we can uh, uh, do with this kind of sentence, um, but we need to follow the uh, tense. In this case, we are not going to change all of the tense because we are not going to uh, write it in past or in future, but in this case, we are going to use the present but with uh, the different kind of tense that we have. And you know that we have four types, but in this case, we are going to use the present uh, progressive or the present continuous. I mean, um, with this kind of uh, if clause that is the day type number one. So we have the second conditional because we are going to develop, um, we are going to um, give more explanation about the, the conditionals because in the first part, we were saying something general about the um, conditional sentences, but in this case, we are going to have more information about this kind of clause or this kind of sentences. So we are going to see the second type that is the second conditional. And we are going to see again, the structure that we are going to use with the second conditional. And we have like this. So we have here the if clause. And we have here the main clause. And for the if clause, we are going to use the past symbol. We are going to use the past simple. And then in this case, we are going to have like conditional simple in this case. But when we were uh, saying this structure at the beginning, we are going to move this one to see the information that we have at the beginning. So let's see. For the type number two here, we have, let's see, we have simple past and full plus infinity. Right, we have will plus infinity for the main clause. So in this case, we are going to write it like um, like this: conditional, simple, or model verb. Model verb. Remember that we are going to use uh, the the will. So. Why we are using this kind of clause? We use the second type or we are going to say it, we use the second conditional or, and it says to talk about um, something that is not in the present, but is um, possible, but it's impossible to occur in the future. Or, uh, or we are going to talk about imaginary situations.
that is not in, in the past. I mean, that is not in the present. So in this case, we are going to talk uh, to talk about uh, something that is not possible uh, that happened in the present, and even it is almost impossible to uh, occur in the future. So in this case, we are going to say that is something imaginary. Para el, el condicional o para el, el, este tipo de oración hablábamos que era algo que se podía llegar a cumplir. Pero también estamos hablando de algo que no está en el presente y que puede eh, o que es casi imposible de que ocurra en el futuro. En muchos de los casos es algo imaginario. Pero en in the first part, we were saying that it's something that is almost impossible, but maybe it can happen. But that is not uh, like something that is uh, true, like in the first one or the uh, zero conditional, for example. So, we have the example. And it says, if I were prime minister, I will make school holidays longer. This is something that we can imagine because maybe uh, we are not in that kind of things or we are not in the political um, things. So this case is something imaginary that maybe we can do in the future. I don't know, it's something that, that can happen, but maybe we are not in that kind of things. So if I were prime minister, I will make school holidays longer. Si fuera primer ministro, o eh, haría las vacaciones escolares más largas. Son cosas que podemos llegar a imaginar, podemos llegar a pensar, pero si no trabajamos por ello, as we were saying, that we can have an idea, but if in that case we are not working for that idea, it is almost impossible to happen. So in this case, it's an idea, something imaginary that can, can happen in the future, can happen in the present, but in this case, we are not working for that idea. So in this case, we have this kind of sentence. If I were prime minister, in some cases we can say, uh, if I were the president, or maybe if I were a policeman, or if I were, um, I don't know, a secretary or something like that. We um, try to um, have this kind of idea. If we were something, we will do another thing or we can change um, a thing that we are not, um, maybe we feel that it is not working. So another one, this is like very, very imaginary. It says, if I had wings, I'll cool fly like Peter Pan. So in this case, we are using this kind of sentence for something very imaginary, because in this case, we are not going to have wings or we are not going to fly like Peter Pan because Peter Pan is a character of a story. In, in this case is for, for children, right? So in this case, we have these kind of things, something that is almost impossible to do or something that is imaginary. 
Also, we have this, um, this second conditional that we are going to use it for uh, or to talk about uh, something that is not in the present, but it can happen in the future. So this uh, second conditional, we are going to use it for, uh, or to talk about something that is not in the present, but it can happen in the future. In this case, it's something possible to happen in the future. So in this case, we have, if I became astronaut, I will travel into space. If I became astronaut, I will travel into space. In this case, it's something possible. Again, like with the prime minister, because if we work for that idea, maybe it can happen in the future. So in this case, it's a talk about something that is not in the present, but it can happen in the future. Also, we can use this kind of, um, conditional or sentence to give advice. To give advices, and in this case it says, then we use, if I were you, we are going to use that phrase. If I were you in the if clause, in the part of the if clause, and will for the main clause. So in this case, for a give advice, we are going to use in the if clause, if I were you, in this case, si fuera tú, we are going to use that phrase to give advice. And we are going to use will for the main clause. That is something that is not going to change. So we have the example. And it says, if I were you, I will study harder for this test. So if I were you, I will study harder for this test. Si fuera tú o en tu lugar, we can uh, translate like that. Si fuera tú o estuviera en tu lugar, Estudiaría más para este examen. In that case, we are giving an advice to someone that has to study for a test or for exam. Also, in this kind of sentence, we can use the past simple for the if clause and the conditional simple, that is the word will, for the main clause. That is something that we already study. So we are not going to uh, stop in that part because we were uh, talking about that. Then. We have in the second conditional, we can use the, um, the past of B, in this case, where in the if clause for 
every person. This is a mandatory when we are going to use this kind of sentence to give advice. So in this kind of sentence, if I were you, this one is for all the persons uh, that we're going to use this kind of um, structures. Para todas las personas vamos a utilizar el where in this case. No vamos a ponerle eh, was o algo parecido, sino que en este caso solo para dar consejos vamos a utilizar el where con todas las personas. Y es algo obligatorio. If he were, if he weren't so lazy, he would find a job. Si no fuera tan perezoso, encontraría un trabajo. And in this case, we are using he. We are going to see this example because we are going to use where with all of the, um, the pronouns in this case. So in this case, for all the person of the, or, or the pronouns, we are going to use where. If I were you, I will study harder for this test. If he weren't so lazy, he will find a job. If I were you, I wouldn't do that. So in that case, um, we are going to use it with all the person. That is something mandatory. In the main clause, we can use also the modal verb, could, might, should, ought to, and all of the uh, modal verbs, plus the infinitive in place of conditional simple. So we are going to write it like this. We also can use a model verb that we have cool, might, should, how to, da -da -da. Followed by the infinity. So we have the example, and it says if he had the book, if he had the book, he might lend it to me. If he had the book, he might lend it to me. Si tuviera el libro, podría. Dejármelo. If we want to express a desire, if we want to express a desire to the present or something that we like to happen or that we like to be different, we can use the verb which, which in this case, followed by a sentence with the verb in past simple. If we want to um, use the verb to be, in the second sentence, we are going to use where for all the persons of the of the um the pronouns. And in some cases, behind the I wish, we are going to use cool. Para este tipo de condicional tenemos muchas aplicaciones. En este caso estamos diciendo que si queremos expresar un deseo. Eh, para el presente o para algo que nos hubiera gustado que fuera diferente, podemos utilizar el verbo wish, desear, seguido de una oración con el verbo en pasado simple. 
Si queremos utilizar el verbo to be, en este caso vamos a seguir aplicando la regla de que utilizamos el where para todas las personas, ¿verdad? Para singular y plural no hay diferencia. Y en muchos casos, detrás del I wish, vamos a utilizar el could. Cool. We are going to use wish, for example. So we are going to see a, a table with this information. So we have here, I wish plus plus simple. Then we have I wish plus where. And then we have I wish plus cool. So in this case, we have this kind of sentence. For the first one, I wish plus but simple. I wish I had more money. Then for the second one, I wish plus where, I wish I were famous. Or we can have another one, I wish Peter were here. And in the last one, I wish we could go to Spain. In this case, um, we have this kind of application for this kind of sentence. And in this case, we are using it for the second conditional. Oh, that's a good one. I wish I were younger. That's a very good sentence. You are applying very good this kind of conditional. That's amazing. So now we are going to see the third conditional because we have four types and this is the third one in uh, the type number three is the fourth one. So we are going to uh, have another explanation for this one and we have the third conditional. So in this case, we are going to have it like this. And in this case, we have more information about this. We are going to have the table like in the others with the information that we have one, two, three. We have in the number one, the if clause. And now we have the main clause. We have for the if clause, in this case, we are going to use the past perfect. And for the main clause, we are going to use conditional perfect. Or we are going to use the model perfect. And we are going to use the third conditional too. to refer to something that um, could happen in the past, but it doesn't do. So in this case, we're going to talk about something that could happen in the past. And we have the example. If he had lent me the money, I will have bought the car. Si me hubiera dejado el dinero, habría comprado ese coche. 
but it's something that um, didn't happen in the past. To express um, how we imagine that something uh, could be in if the things uh, could happen in a different way. If he, if he had left on time, he wouldn't have missed his flight. Para expresar, ¿verdad? Como imaginamos que hubiera pasado algo o como hubiera ocurrido algo. Um, sí, hubiera pasado de una forma diferente. In this case, we can say, eh, si él se hubiera o hubiera salido a tiempo, no habría perdido su vuelo. Estamos imaginando cómo hubiera pasado una situación. Sí, hubiera sido de una manera diferente. To express something about the other action. In this case, uh, we can use it to express um, that we are, maybe we are not, uh, that is something um, not bad, but in this case, we can uh, say something about the action of someone. And in this case is to be very, um, someone that can say, an expression or we can give an advice, but in this case, we are not giving an advice like that. But it, we have the example. But in this case, he said, if I had been more careful, it's like a regret, I guess. So in this case, it's like when we are uh, regretting something about the actions. Um, or maybe in this case, it's having a thought about something that happened that can have another um, 
another ending in this case. Podemos hablar de que nos estamos como, uh, puede ser como hablar con, con un pesar eh, o nos estamos eh, recordando que algo hubiera pasado de una diferente manera si hubiéramos puesto atención. Like in the first example, if I had been more careful, I wouldn't have broken the glass. In that case, si hubiera tenido más cuidado, no habría roto el vaso o el vidrio in this, in this case, el glass, el, el vaso. So in that case, it's like a reminder of something that we can uh, do in a different way. But maybe for our actions, it is not like that. So in this case, it's like a regret or that we are not paying enough attention to the situation that we are living. And in the second example, it says, if, we, if he hadn't followed the instructions, he wouldn't have damaged the CD player. In that case, if the person were more careful about the things that he had to do, in this case, to read the instruction, maybe he can make the CD player a function. But in this case, He had not followed the instructions. So the, the result is that he um, damaged the CD player. So in this case, we are maybe talking about some regrets that we have in our actions or in the action of the other uh, people. But that is something that we can uh, we cannot change because we were maybe, um, or we were not paying enough attention to the situation that we were living in that moment. So in the main clause, we also can use the modal verb. So we can use it in the, in the, in the main clause. We can use could, my, should, ought to, and etc. plus. So in this case, we're going to have the examples. Plus have. That's the participle. In this case, we have the example. If I had been more careful, I might not have broken the glass. So in this case, we have the same sentence, but with some changes. So if I have been more careful, I might not have broken the glass. Si hubiera tenido más cuidado, podría no haber roto el vaso. So in that case, it's a, we can make some changes, but it's the same sentence with the same intention. That is to make some regrets about the action that we perform in some time. So then we have here the uh, four types of conditional that were um, the main types of conditional. We have the zero conditional, the first, second, and third conditional that we were uh, learning about in the last week and in this uh, session. But we have another thing that it is very important that we can use with, with this kind of sentence that is The mixed conditional, we have that part also that we can use. That is the mixed conditional. And it says that the mixed conditional that we can create this kind of conditional sentence using the if clause of the third conditional and the main clause of the second conditional. In this kind of conditional, it refers to the result that an action that happened in the past, it has in the present. So 
We can create this kind of conditional. Using the if clause of the third conditional and the main clause of the second conditional. This kind. in the present. So in this case, we can uh, have this mixed conditional using two parts of the, um, the different kind of conditionals. In this case, we are going to use the if clause for the third conditional, and then we are going to use the main clause of the other um, sentence. Así que vamos a crear este tipo de, condicion de, de, de oración condicional creando, ¿verdad? Uniendo dos eh, oraciones diferentes o dos tipos de condicionales diferentes. Vamos a utilizar el if clause of the, the second, I mean, of the third conditional, vamos a utilizar el if clause, la, la primera parte, o en este caso puede ser primera o segunda parte de la oración, de la tercera, I mean, de la segunda, the second conditional. And, I mean, Yes, of the third conditional and the main clause of the second. Vamos a utilizar el if clause de la tercera y el main clause de la segunda. That's the, uh, the structure. And we have here, we are going to mark this, the if clause of the third conditional, this one, and the main clause of the second conditional. Así que vamos a utilizar el if clause del tercer tipo de, de, de oración condicional y vamos a utilizar el main clause o la cláusula principal del de segundo. We are going to create that mix. Y se utiliza para hablar o para expresar o en este caso para eh, referirnos al resultado de algo que sucedió en el pasado pero que tiene su efecto o que puede afectar algo en el presente. So we are going to create this mix to talk about an action that happened in the past, but also has um, it effects in the present. So we have the example. And it says, if I hadn't been so careless, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in trouble now. Si no hubiera sido tan descuidado, ahora no tendría problemas. So, in what time this person um, has been careless? In that case, it is in the past. He had been careless in, in the past and it has it effects in the present because now he or she is in trouble. So in this case, we are going to use it for something that, that um, maybe uh, begin in the past, but now has it effects in the present. Para esta parte es cosas que eh, pasaron, obviamente, en el pasado y que ahora tienen su efecto en el presente que pudo haber sido una acción mínima, que ahora tiene su efecto en el presente. So, 
to end this topic, we are going to create uh, this table. So we are going to do it in this uh, place because it is something um, kind of big. So we are going to see the difference in the in the type of conditionals and the um, structures or the uh, tenses that we are going to use with every uh, conditional. So we are going to do it like this. This is like, um, this is the review, the complete review of the uh, these clauses. So we have we have here the if clause, and we have here the main clause, and we have here. Number one, zero conditional. And we are going to use this word always. And for the if clause, remember, we use present simple. And for the main clause, we also use present simple. The word always refers to the thing that um, the actions always happen in that uh, way, that is uh, something true. Then we have first conditional, that is the, the second one. And it says present or future time. And we have the structure. For the uh, if clause, we are going to use present simple. And we are going to divide it like this. We're going to write three times present simple. And one time present continuous. Why? Because in this uh, section of the main clause, we have some structure that we can use. And we have the future simple, plus, that, that is the structure will plus infinitive. Then we have the other thing that we can use in the main clause is the model verb plus infinitive. Then we have the imperative. And the last one is future simple. That is will plus infinity. Then we have the second conditional. That in this case is present or future time again. And we have here that simple or the if clause. And we have conditional simple that is will plus infinitive. And also we can use with past simple, the model verb plus infinitive. Then we have the third conditional and we are almost done. We have third conditional. And 
And here we have past time. So we have here, past perfect. And we have had plus past participle. And in this, we have conditional perfect. And we have the structure will plus have plus past participle. Or we have model plus have plus past participle. And the last one that we have is the mixed conditional. So here we have past perfect. That is the had plus past participle. And here we have conditional symbol. That is the wool plus infinitive. And mobile verb plus infinitive. So in this table, we have all the information that we were talking about at the um, this kind of sentences, the conditional sentences, we have the zero, first, second, and third, and the mixed conditional. So in this table, we have all the structures that we were using with this conditional. So now it's time to end the session. We are going to have our last um, session tomorrow. Remember to work in the platform because it is very important that you work in the platform because in that place we do work I mean, you are uh, marking your progress and it is very important to, that you have to end all the exercise. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night.